Somebody shout, one Jesus. One Jesus. One body of Christ. One body of Christ. One Monday. One Monday. Wonderful viewers, Jesus' is coming is imminent. God's final move of the Holy Spirit is here. This move, according to the scriptures, will cause a massive harvest of souls into the kingdom of Christ and unite the body of Christ in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus to live as icons of Christ. Glory to God. The final global movement brings you teachings that will position you to be an amazing success in life and relevant in God's kingdom as we get set for the rapture. Final global movement. One Jesus. One body of Christ. Christ. One Final global movement. Be my church. Let me be my church. I'm left united in our faith and our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Wow, wonderful viewers. I'm so excited to welcome you to today's special episode of your favorite Goliath devotion. This, of course, is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. We have been looking at uh, very important highlights from previous new creation conferences over this week, and that's what we're going to be doing until we step into new creation conference 2020. These have been really life transforming sessions, and I know that your life will never be the same even in today. I want to quickly remind you that refreshing times are back. It's a special service we hold concentrating everything on the Holy Spirit. There's never been a time on the earth where the sons of God need to know and work with the Holy Spirit as times like this. And so every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m., we gather at the Glass Center too to have a fellowship and teachings from the Holy Spirit. If you can be there, join us on our YouTube channel because your life will never be the same again. I'm glad to announce that the portals for the registration for the New Christian Conference 2020 are opened. Hurry and go to our website and register after today and ensure that you keep the notification that you receive is very important for an important purpose. If you are not confident with internet, call us and someone will help you to register. I'm also very glad to announce that this year's New Christian Conference comes with a special package for ministers of God. These are the times when our ministries have to be very relevant. There's a difference between being busy in the kingdom and being relevant in the kingdom. We're going to be having the relevant ministry ministers conference on the second day of the New Christian Conference. That's the morning session. Make sure that you do register. Register for the conference itself and register for the ministers session also. So today, if you are ready, we are going to pray. And from there, we'll go straight into uh, what happened in 2018. Are you ready? Let's share in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, our hearts are ready to receive life and spirit into this ministration. And we know that our lives will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. So if you are ready, we are going to go straight into the National Theater and look at what the Holy Ghost taught us in 2008. I'm going to take an excerpt. And after that, I'm going to introduce you my guest for today. I'm going to go into the discussion and I know your lives will never be the same. Let's watch this. Hallelujah. And to announce the whole world and the church of God through this conference some important facts. And number one of them is that God has an eternal plan for mankind. He had this plan for mankind before he created the universe. So God would like us to announce to the whole world that he had an eternal plan for all mankind before he created the whole world. And that plan was to adopt mankind as his own begotten sons to dwell in his presence forever in love being holy and without blame there is a reason why he added the being holy and without blame but that is outside the scope of our discussion this year hallelujah so that's the first thing God would like me to announce to the whole world through this conference and the body of Christ, 
that he, God, has an eternal plan for mankind. And he had this plan for mankind before he even created the whole universe. Let's take our Bibles to Genesis, I mean, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Reading from verse 4 into 5. So I'm reading from the King James Version now. Ephesians 1, 4. Can we go together? One to go. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. He chose us when? Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in his presence in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So having predestinated us, having predetermined, and this is a divine predetermination, it cannot be changed. Because Papa God has predetermined it has to happen. Having predestined us that he will adopt us as his begotten sons, he then chose us in him to live in his presence forever in love without shame and in holiness. Hallelujah. Can we read the same scripture from the, the Passion's translation? The Passion's translation, Ephesians chapter 1. So if you don't have it, just write it down and put it in the bracket TPT and listen to me so that you get it. Ephesians 1 verse 4. It says that, And he chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself even before he laid the foundation of the universe. Hmm. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we should be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. Verse 5. For it was always in his perfect plan, his perfect plan to adopt us as his children, his delightful children, through our union with Jesus, the anointed one, so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace. For the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus, he has for us. Hallelujah. <laughs> The love of God for mankind is unfathomable. That is why until you understand God's love, you have not yet become a Christian. Because it is about God and his immeasurable love for mankind. Because of this love, he did this. So he has asked me to announce to the whole world through this conference that he had an eternal plan for mankind. And that plan was to adopt us as his own begotten sons. Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29. In the same Passion translation. So don't move from there if you have it. If you don't, then just write the scripture down and follow me. Romans 8, 29. In the Passion translation, it says that, Hallelujah. For he knew all about us before we were born. And he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. Did you hear that? He destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. Then he said, this means the son is the oldest among the vast family of brothers and sisters. Who will become like Jesus? <laughs> the oldest brother among the brothers and sisters. God says to tell the whole world he had a plan. So all that is happening in the world is an unfolding of this eternal plan of God. Number two, he said to announce the whole world through the church that this eternal plan of his is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. God's eternal plan of adopting mankind as his own begotten sons to live in his presence for eternity in love, being holy and without shame has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. 
That means that the coming of Jesus Christ into this world was not only for the saving us from saving of mankind from sin. Jesus came to accomplish much more than that. The redemption of mankind was a means to an end. It was not the end itself. As we will soon realize, if Adam had not sinned, there would have been no need for salvation. So the coming of Jesus would have been direct adoption as sons. But because Adam fell, he first had to sort that one out. To pave the way that the eternal plan of God will be fulfilled in us. Oh, hallelujah. God's eternal plan has been fulfilled through Jesus. That is why John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him, number one, should not perish. He didn't stop there. But have everlasting life, eternal life. Should not perish means should be saved, should be rescued. That's salvation. But it doesn't end there. But the ultimate goal is not just should not perish, but have, but receive the impartation of God's kind of life in their spirits. And the impartation of the life of God into a man's spirit is what makes him a begotten son of God. So the coming of Jesus was salvation plus fulfillment of eternal plan. So you go to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. And I was talking about God said, God who will have all men to be saved. And he didn't stop there. But to come unto the knowledge of the truth. The Greek word is epignosis. The exact and full knowledge of the truth. Which truth? The truth that he had an eternal plan for mankind. So to be saved is just the first step. The ultimate thing after you are saved is to know the truth. The truth about why did God save me? Why did he save the world? To fulfill his eternal plan, which he had before the beginning of the whole world. So if you go to Psalm 67 verse 2, it says that sinners around the world with the good news of your saving power, and your eternal plan for all mankind. That's what it says. It says, send us around the world with the good news of your saving power, and it didn't stop there, and your eternal plan for all mankind. So the full gospel is the gospel of salvation plus the message of God's eternal plan. But all over all this millennia, what God has permitted the church to know is the gospel of salvation. By the new dispensation that will herald the message of God's eternal plan shall soon be unveiled in this auditorium. Yeah. Hallelujah. Send us around the world with the message of your saving power and the message of your eternal plan for all mankind. That's the second thing. So to tell you that he had an eternal plan, to let you know that that eternal plan has been fulfilled in Christ. Then number three, to announce the whole world that receiving Jesus results in much more than being saved. And that's just logic if you follow the first two points. Receiving Jesus results in much more than being saved. If someone receives Jesus, he's not only saved, but God's eternal plan of making him his begotten son is accomplished. It's fulfilled. It means the person has become begotten. Adopted as God's own begotten son. So salvation is not only, oh, receive Christ and you'll be saved from hell. We must now explain to the world the eternal purpose for which Jesus saved the world. And finally, to announce to the whole world that the day has come and the spiritual climate is set for these begotten sons of God to begin to manifest in the world. The day has come. Because if I have Christ, then I am saved and I have been adopted as God's begotten son. If I am adopted, I must live as such. I must manifest 
as a son. And do you know what? According to Romans chapter 8, verse 19, the endless expectation of all creature has been waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And tonight, the climate is going to change in the spirit. It's going to change. It's going to change. These are great days to be alive. These are great days to be alive. Have you gotten the message? God has an eternal plan of adopting mankind as his begotten sons. That eternal plan is fulfilled in the coming of Jesus. Receiving Jesus is being saved plus fulfillment of eternal plan. So if the eternal plan is fulfilled, you are God's begotten son, you must then begin to manifest. But the manifestation hadn't happened because the dispensation had not arrived. But once the dispensation is launched tonight, it means we are moving out of this place to perpetually manifest as sons and daughters of the living God. Hallelujah. When we talk about adoption, the Spirit just prompted me to clarify this. I have taught on the Gula devotion before, if you have followed, but you follow following. Human adoption is different from divine adoption. In human adoption, a man and his wife goes for a child who is not their biological child and brings the child into their home and legally confess on that child all the rights of their biological son. That's adoption in the human sense. And what it means is that whatever their children could have, this child should have everything. But the thing is, if you do a DNA test of that adopted child and do the DNA test of that person who adopted, they are two different people. But divine adoption, Marco Bradiza. Theology has told us that we were human and we just got adopted. No. Divine adoption, he doesn't only bring you, but he impacts his life. So when you do DNA test of me and DNA test of upper God, you have the same results. So I am like his begotten son. This was the adoption he was talking about and I will show you very soon in the scriptures. To give us eternal life. To make us his biological sons and daughters. Oh, Maso Commander Abasa. Welcome back. Wow, 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 that was amazing. These are really great days to be alive, as the Lord told us in that conference. Well, with me today, again, uh, very uh, distinguished ministers of the gospel. Once again, I have with me today the, the highly esteemed pastor in charge of the Colegonal Main English Church in the person of Reverend Dr. Bismarck Boko Sari. You're welcome. Thank you, so Thank you for being here today. Right. Also with us today is the pastor of the Legal New Creatures Fellowship in the person of Pastor Dr. William Christigan. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Wow. These are great days to be alive. Wow. I was so blessed just watching that. Why are these great days to be alive? Wow. Thank you so much, sir. You're blessed. Certainly, mm. these are great days to be alive. Mm. We are getting to know so much. Getting to know so much. <laughs> from the word of God. Mm. And it was clear mm. that day when you expounded to us from the scriptures mm. that God has an eternal plan. Mm. And this plan has been from the very foundations mm. of the earth. So, you know, life is not just like... Um, a, a cycle of repetition of meaningless events. There, there is a plan. There's a plan. We are an unfolding of an eternal plan. Mm. This tells us how unique we are. Mm. You know, wonderful we are. There are times that people have been through so much in life. And sometimes even people in higher positions and people who are a bit well-placed in society tend to treat other people as if they are lesser beings and they don't matter in society. But what we are hearing is that, look, God has a plan for your life. You are so special to God. And this plan was there before the first person was made. Wow, this is amazing. God has an eternal plan. Can you show us in scripture? We mentioned some scriptures. Ephesians 1 forever. Can you just expound that to us? 
Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, chapter 1, mm -hmm. the verse 4 and 5. Mm. It's according as he has chosen us in him mm. before the foundation of the world. Mm. Glory. Mm. Now, let me just inter mm. interrupt here. Mm. He said, he chose us in him. Who is the him here? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. That means Papa God chose the human race mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm. And this is what we teach about Jesus. Mm. Jesus, as we know, <laughs> was dead before the time the, the Jesus of Nazareth was born. Mm. He existed in the Father's heart mm. as the Word. Mm. And before he became a visible person as Jesus Christ, God knew him and even chose the human race in him. Mm -hmm. So wonderful viewers, you were factored into Christ before you were born. Mm. That is why receiving <laughs> Jesus is not like if you have a choice. If you are born as a human, your life on earth was factored to progress in Jesus. Mm. So, uh, missing Jesus is not like, oh, I've just missed Christianity, I've missed religion. It's about missing God's plan for your life. Mm. That should never happen to you if you are watching mm. us today. So, continue the scripture. I'm just so blessed. Says, <laughs> Before the foundation of the world, mm. that we should be holy mm. and without blame before him in mm. love. Hallelujah. Five says, having predestinated us mm. unto the adoption of children, by Jesus Christ to himself, mm. according to the good pleasure of his will. Wow. Mm. So what is this eternal plan? Wow. So God's eternal plan mm. is that he was going to adopt mankind mm. as his sons. Mm. My mm. God, this is so big. Mm. To adopt mm. mankind mm. as his son. This is totally amazing. You know, many people when they talk about, again, adoption, they don't get it clear. A lot of people just try to transport humanistic relationships into divine dealings. Mm -hmm. You know, as explained in that message, uh, people have the understanding of adoption, you know, it's like, look at the example of Israelites. Mm -hmm. Israelites were human beings, mm -hmm. but God just chose them to be special to him. Mm -hmm. So in that case, God kind of adopted Israel to use Israel as his firstborn and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to this adoption we are talking about, mm -hmm. A lot of people also think that it's that kind of adoption. Some people even think that Jesus, there's nothing truly divine about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they say, the day he was baptized, then God adopted him. Mm -hmm. So he was just normal human, and then God adopted him as his son. So they think the same way that, okay, you are a human being. When you believe in Jesus, then God kind of adopts you and gives you the privilege or some divine things. But is that what really this adoption is about? Mm -hmm. No, sir. What is it? <laughs> like you explained to us, mm. divine adoption mm. is different from human adoption. Mm. Human adoption, mm. human adoption mm -hmm. a couple go and adopt a child mm -hmm. and they confer on that child mm. the rights and privileges of being a son. Mm -hmm. the, the child has access to everything that they have. Mm -hmm. But in divine adoption, mm -hmm. God hasn't just conferred mm. privileges of divinity on us. Mm. He has actually imparted his life to mm. us. He has brought us into his class. His class. Mm. In our spirits. In our spirits. Mm. So in human adoption, you do a DNA test on a person, mm. a different person. Mm. DNA test of the adopted mm. child, different. Mm. In divine adoption, mm. if you examine us spiritually mm. and examine God, mm. it's the same thing. Mm. This, this is just mind-boggling. But brothers and sisters, this is the truth. The born again is divine. And this is the purpose for New Creation Conference. To help you to exhibit this divine nature. You know, we have been sharing this thing about divine adoption and the fact that we are of the same nature as God. And people understand. Let's just read the scripture. John chapter 1, verse 12. Let's think from verse 11 into 12 quickly. Because our time is catching us up. John chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 11. He says, he came unto his own, mm. and his own received him not. Mm. 12. It says, but as many as received him, mm -hmm. to them gave he power mm. to become the sons of God, mm -hmm. even to them that believe on his name. Uh -huh. Verse 13. Verse 13, the bomb. Uh -huh. It says, which were born. My God. Not of blood. So, just for continue. Mm. So, in divine adoption, there is a birth. Mm. Mm. It's not just... I, did, I, I didn't give birth to you, but I'm just conferring on you rights. I gave birth to yeah. you. And this birth, it differentiates it from the human being. Go mm. ahead. Uh -huh. This not of blood, mm. nor of the will of the flesh, mm. nor of the will of man, mm. but of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise so God. in divine adoption, we are born. Hallelujah. 
And we said in that message, so the coming of Jesus was for this adoption. Mm. Not just the saving of hmm. mankind. The saving of mankind was something that happened as a means to the end. Yeah. Because by the time Jesus came, he was predestined to come. Yeah. But by the time he came, man had fallen. Yeah. So he had to sort out the issue of fall. That's why he died and mm. saved the world. Mm. So many people would think, oh, Jesus came to save us. He came to save us. That's nice. Mm. But the ultimate goal is not just to save the world, but to get man to a place where man can believe in him and be adopted. <laughs> So what does it mean technically today to say somebody has received Jesus? You see, so if you have received Jesus, mm. it means that you have been adopted. Mm. It means you have become a begotten son of God. Mm. God has given birth to you mm. in your spirit. Mm. The same life God has mm. is what you have. My mm. God. Mm. It's a, this is a testimony mm. that we have mm. that God has given us mm. eternal life. Mm. And this life mm. is in the son. Mm. He that has the son mm. has mm. life. Mm. Then in verse 13 it says that this I write to you that ye may, may know, know that you have eternal life. Glory to God. Wow. And you know, in John chapter 5, he said that as the Father has life, life in himself, himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. That means we go proper God's own kind of life. Wonderful viewer. This is why sickness cannot survive in your body. You cannot be defeated. You are more than a conqueror. We don't say this thing to just get excited. These are facts in the scriptures. We are begotten. If you have received Jesus, you are a bomb. Oh, yeah. But you need to know. That's why you must be at the new creation conference. Wow. wow we have so much to talk about. But time has gone us out. Imagine someone is watching us today and he hasn't received his life. Must we leave him alone? No. No. Give somebody the opportunity to receive Jesus. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> With all that you've heard, receiving Jesus is stepping into God's eternal plan mm. for your life. And that is the adoption. Mm. Being brought into the class of God. Being born by God. Wow. And it's easy. The Bible says that you have to believe that Jesus is the one through whom you can receive this adoption. He's the one that can authorize you to become a child of God. Believe that he was raised from the dead. And confess him as the Lord of your life. If you want to do this, why don't you say this with me? Say that, dear Jesus, I believe with all my heart that you are the son of God raised from the dead, and I confess you today as the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have done this, you are truly born again. Make sure you get planted in the Bible teaching church and remain in Christ till he comes because he is going to show up very soon, one of these days. Wow, it has been so amazing. I'm sure there's so much more to share, but time will not permit us. Thank you so much, Pastor Gani, for coming. Thank you so we are much, blessed sir. having you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Dr. Bismarck. God bless you so much. You, wow, so this is how much time will permit us for today. I don't see why you missed New Creation Conference 2020. You cannot miss it. We are surely going to come your way again on our next episode. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.